Coming up on this edition of Special People, Special Issues, have you ever wondered how to bake or learn how to bake if you're differently abled? The Cookie Man is here, known as the Cookie Ranger of Yonkers, New York. Stay tuned as PSI starts right now. BronxNet. Your voice, your views, your vision. The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Welcome to this edition of Special People, Special Issues, the program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently abled. I'm Lauren Seiler. On this edition, we'll focus on learning how to bake great cookies with Steve Ruff. He's known as the Cookie Man of Yonkers. He's also a contractor with the, with the Board of Education of Yonkers. Thank you for joining me on this edition of Special People, Special Issues. Thank you very much, Larry, for having me on. Okay. Can you explain to me what made you want to uh, start baking? I really started watching my mom when I was growing up and then I started baking as a as a hobby to uh, give cookies to people as gifts around Christmas time. And I really started with my brother's uh, company when he was working uh, in Connecticut and started baking for their Christmas party and everybody loved him. Mm -hmm. So I baked him again the next year and the next year and then I made them for friends uh, where I live and uh, a couple of Christmas parties. Mm -hmm. So everybody decided, well, why don't you try this? You know, do, you're pretty good at it. These cookies are great. Mm -hmm. And I thought about that. Well, Steve's Great Cookies kind of got launched that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I took a business seminar and, and went on from there. Now, um, you know, people with disabilities or special abilities, as we like to call them here on this show, right. um, have extraordinary gifts and your gift is baking. Um, you have a special need yourself. Uh, if you want to talk about that, uh, you sure. may. Uh, what is it and how do you deal with it when you uh, bake your cookies or teach other people how to bake? You know, um, I have a, a sort of a, a disability in reading. Mm -hmm. I was a slow reader growing up and um, I have a reading comprehension um, uh, dysfunction. Mm -hmm. So what I do to offset that, I've learned to get around that by taking a little more time to read and I've learned to get around that and, and uh, actually what I want to show people is how they can overcome their their fear of trying something new. Mm -hmm. uh, even though they're differently abled, I have um, the ability to show them how to physically get involved with these ingredients and to put something together that people appreciate that's really not so too hard to So they're not make. as scared. I mean okay this is coconut this is chocolate chip right. but a lot of people with disabilities or special needs are afraid to use an oven sometimes or right that's where it'd have to be uh, supervised for a while but once they get over the fear mm -hmm. and they understand especially uh, how to use uh, a commercial oven it's mm -hmm. big enough and once they go through the safety class you know food safety and handling mm -hmm. then they they're certified and and they can do it too uh, there are a lot of uh, differently able People working in kitchens, restaurants, uh, certainly uh, mm -hmm. that can be that can be worked out. Now, um, you've worked with um, special needs groups. You've worked with uh, classrooms. You've worked in community centers. What, what group do you like working with the most? I think I love working with children. Um, basically eight to ten years old. They're oh. open to imagination and creativity and you can kind of mold their experiences in new ways and mm -hmm. this is this is my favorite audience to work with. Um, I work with some uh, everything from pre-k to senior citizens at the museums and environmental centers I've worked in but that seems to be the age where I connect the best uh, so that's... Um, I notice here I notice here um, that you 
um, teach um, environmental sciences uh, at the planetarium. Uh, uh, you give uh, tours and so on. Um, what inspired you to do the, those things? And then, I mean, did you start baking cookies first and then did that? Or, or I mean, what made you really want to go into teaching? I loved working with children and I, um, it's interesting, when you, when you uh, go through a job transition, I, I was laid off twice in my life and mm -hmm. uh, currently I'm uh, looking for full-time employment, but it's given me the opportunities to try something new. So the first time I was laid off, I worked in a museum as a volunteer, mm -hmm. and I fell in love with working with children and taking them through tours. It was a maritime museum in Maryland on the Chesapeake Bay, and I just loved what I was doing, and I, and I knew I had a gift to do that. So I pursued that, went to graduate school eventually after working through the Smithsonian for a little while at the Natural History Museum, working with kids there and then went on to uh, a children's education program for museum education at mm -hmm. Bank Street College. And then did that for a while, and then the cookies came later. And, and, and you've also been an adjunct professor at the College of, Minnesota, Absolutely. Uh, of Mount St. Vincent. I love doing that. I love working with college students. They have a similar kind of need to uh, be creative mm -hmm. and to find another avenue to explore their environment. So that's what I was doing is teaching about the Hudson River at the College of Mount St. Vincent. I, I love doing that. It's every spring and uh, it's been great. Uh, now, what are some of the misconceptions that people have around people with disabilities or special needs when they first meet them? I think they think they have some sort of disease. You know, people don't want to work with them because they think they don't recognize the, the disability as such, they recognize it as um, perhaps an illness, or they uh, they think it's um, something to do with their mental capacity or anything else. Um, I think that's that's a tragic uh, sort of uh, labeling of people, but I think that's a common misconception. Um, so, to in order to overcome that, you really have to get to know. Uh, people with disabilities and work with them and that's what I've been able to do through the education system in a museum so it enlightened me quite a bit mm -hmm. especially in graduate school I had a special needs class mm -hmm. for children with special needs and I just felt they were more focused they had more passion for what they were doing than other children mm -hmm. and they even though they were differently abled they were capable of producing some of the most creative work I've ever seen so it was quite an eye-opening experience for me okay. Um, why is it so important for, now, um, education is important, but why is it so important for, for a good education, especially when um, you're a child with a special need? I, I think you need to branch out and feel that you can uh, have more control over situations around you, over your environment, mm -hmm. uh, have a feeling of independence. And I think uh, creative avenues give you that. Mm -hmm. Especially if you bake or if you paint, if you sing, um, all those talents give you a way to feel feel confident, feel some sort of control or independence over your life. So um, that's my gift to others is to show them that they can do something like baking and, and uh, create something that creates a wonderful memory for other people. Mm -hmm. Now, um you know, there are, there are cooking courses or uh, cooking classes for people with disabilities. Um, right. The Bronx has them, different boroughs. Have you ever thought about teaching one of your own? Um, I haven't come to that, con um, I haven't come to that yet, but um, uh, that's a good consideration. Uh, I love teaching and I love baking, so the two of them would combine well in a culinary class for mm -hmm. students that are differently abled, so that would be... That'd be a great idea. Um, that'd be a good thing to pursue. Uh, when growing up, um, did you, oh, of course, um, I don't know if you knew that you were going to do this, um, but have you have you um, watched other chefs on television? And if you if you did, who was your inspiration? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I've always loved Amira Lagasse. You know, when he uses his bam, uh, uh, when he adds something to a recipe and and just kicks it in up a notch and I've always loved that. I've used that in other education programs and he's an inspiration to me. Uh, and I think 
even though he wasn't a chef or a baker, Captain Kangaroo, that I go back, <laughs> I'm old school too. So Captain Kangaroo is that, is that an That's who to gave me. you the inspiration I think for the, the Cookie Ranger? I think for the hat and the uniform, <laughs> might have been Captain Kangaroo. Okay. I grew up watching him. So. Well, excuse me while we go to break. We'll be back with more with the Cookie Man and the Cookie Ranger of Yonkers when SPSI returns. Welcome back to Special People, Special Issues. Steve, you're a, um, a science educator. You've uh, worked with other people with special needs, and you teach them how to bake cookies. Can you explain some of the, uh, the, some of the process that goes into baking cookies? Sure, sure, Larry, thanks. Uh, what I have here, first of all, for food safety, you always have disposable gloves. And then you have some basic uh, food equipment, some uh, measuring spoons, a spatula, a scoop for scooping the dough when it's ready, and some spoons to kind of spoon out the ingredients. And of course, measuring cups to measure everything. We have some basic ingredients for the cookies. Start with oatmeal and flour. Those are the two things to start with. Then add white sugar and brown sugar. And then, depending on the flavor of cookie, you uh, uh, also have to add uh, baking soda, baking powder, and cornstarch, milk, eggs, butter and cinnamon, which is not pictured here. But then the varieties kind of branch from there based on a basic uh, recipe. So coconut banana, coconut banana, raisins, and chocolate chips. Mm -hmm. So what I have here, once you combine the coconut banana and chocolate chips with the oatmeal, mm -hmm. then you bake the dough once you uh, mix everything together. And they come out like this. This is fresh out of the oven. And these are the banana coconut chocolate chip cookies that I started with. This is my first real original recipe that everybody loves, made a big hit with everyone. And um, so that's what these are on the cookie, uh, on the baking sheet that they came out of the oven on. Mm -hmm. And once I um, plate those or uh, package them, then they are more like these. And I let them um, sit for about six or eight hours, just let them kind of cool and dry mm -hmm. uh, before I package them or put them in a tray. Now, what's the importance, you know, um, you know, People with uh, special needs and everybody else loves cookies, but when you make cookies, what's the, or make anything, what's the, um, why is it so important to, um, you know, um, deal with uh, food safety and, uh, uh, you know, protecting yourself with you know, sure. stuff like sure. gloves and so on? Uh, well, first of all, I should mention, I took a food safety class in order to learn the techniques to prevent uh, diseases from, or any kind of contamination from getting salmonella into the... Salmonella poisoning. And oh, things. salmonella. You've got all kinds of toxins that can get into eggs and milk especially. And uh, that's important to protect people from uh, any, kind of, any kind of problems or sickness. So that's why I took that course and was certified. And now I know how to handle food safely, make a large quantity of cookies, handle the dough safely. Mm -hmm. And I haven't had a problem um, since I learned that. And um, I was doing things a little differently before that, not wearing gloves and washing my hands a lot. Mm -hmm. But now I know how to handle food well, and that protects the public. I, I, I understand that you've worked with kids and you, you put on costumes and things right, like that. Right, like this one? <laughs> what, what, why or... What made you come up with the Cookie Ranger? Well, you know, I've always loved uh, Yogi Bear and Mr. Ranger, and I thought of um, when I took a business seminar course uh, in New York City uh, in Yonkers, and I had to come up with an identity for the branding of my cookies. So I thought, well, what can I do? And I loved the idea of Ranger Rick. I loved uh, Mr. Ranger from Yogi Bear. I loved all those things. So I thought, 
you know, I love to dress up and put on costumes, and I, I had to think about it for a while, and it came to me just the Cookie Ranger. Uh, Steve, we're going to go to break. Um, uh, we're going to go to break right now. We'll be right back with the Special People Special Issues Bulletin Board after these munching messages. <laughs> A sandwich is a quick and easy choice. And with the right ingredients, it can be good and good for you. So I'm here today to see who can build the ultimate sandwich. All right, when the time is up, our judges will give you their scores. Ready, set, go! Okay, uh -huh. Jason starts out with a multi-grain roll. Ooh, Allison stuffing her pita with, yes, spinach. A great source of iron. Jason isn't skipping on the protein, adding plenty of smoked turkey. It's like Allison's putting the finishing touches with crispy red bell peppers for a dose of vitamin A. Time! <laughs> It looks like we have a tie. We'll need to call in our special guest referee. Uh. Now, these are what I call quick, delicious lunches. Whole grain breads, a whole variety of ingredients. There are so many different ways to build delicious, healthy sandwiches. These two get high marks in every category. I'd say you're both winners. <laughs> America. Let's get healthy together. Did you know that getting up and getting active for just 60 minutes a day is all it takes to help you get stronger, look better, and feel great? Or that fresh fruits and veggies aren't just healthier and crunchier, they can taste better too? Eating better and getting more active is easier than you think. Yeah! Keep watching for some fun and easy ways to discover the magic of healthy living in your life. America. Let's get healthy together! <laughs> Steve? Welcome back to Special People, Special Issues. Steve, um, Thank you. One, uh, um, let's talk about some of your future goals. Sure. What, what, is it, what are some of your future goals being um, the fact that you bake and um, that you teach baking to people with special needs? Well, one of the future goals I have is to, first of all, make a profitable uh, company of this and spread the word that uh, it's something that everybody can do. So I want to give back to the community through the community center I work with first and then branch out. Why um, now there are other types of cookies? Oh, sure. Other cookie companies. It's a lot of competition um, that out we there. can't <laughs> mention here on the show. Right, right. Um, but what makes your cookies better than the rest? I think my cookies have a special richness about them because of the ingredients I use and uh, the way I bake them. Um, I bake them for a little longer than normal uh, to really um, enhance the flavor and the dough is thick enough it takes a lot longer to bake. They're more like, especially with the oatmeal, they're more almost like a granola bar. They're that thick and dense. So they leave the person with a taste that lingers a little bit longer uh, than other cookies. Um, mm -hmm. So I take pride in that and it's a gift. It's God's gift that I'm very proud to, to use and mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. uh, to make sure people enjoy them that way. So cool. I think I might have an advantage that way. All right, now, um, you're an educator. Sure, right? yes. Um, I forget his uh, first name, but there is a, a cookie company by the name of Famous Amos. Yes. He's also an yes. educator. He's also, he was an educator on PBS. He's an inspiration to me. That was um, one was of the... He was an educator yes. on PBS. My question is, um, when you educate people and teach them how to bake, um, do you go step by step? Uh, and, and taste them ingredient by ingredient, and what ingredient? Because uh, you know there's the illnesses, there's right. the there's the there's the bacteria and all that. Do you go through step by step, or I mean, how do you do it? I think uh, to start with, I kind of pre-make uh, certain steps, or, or I sort of do to make it a little bit easier to comprehend. Because when you go down and break it down from from initial ingredients, from raw ingredients. There's quite a bit to it, so um, the steps are kind of condensed when I show someone how to do it, and then I break it down for them as they feel confident and comfortable with it. Uh, um, but Famous Amos definitely is an inspiration for me. I want to be that person in Times Square just like he was, giving out his samples and uh, making his name known. And he gives back through PBS and all his programs, and that's what I like to do too. Um, describe some of the, some of the other work, or some uh, more of your work with uh, some of the disabled uh, kids. Uh, well, in the planetarium at the museum where I work part time, I uh, work a lot with Lighthouse for the Blind, 
and they come and Lighthouse International. Li yes, that's right. I'm sorry. Yes, that's correct. And they come with groups of kids that um, want to feel the experience of being uh, shown the stars, even though they may not be uh, visually capable of, of uh, taking in the whole experience that way. It's great to be surrounded by the sound and the impact of what that show does. And it's an amazing thing that happens in the planetarium to create a new environment for these children that don't get that opportunity. And I, I love that. And I love showing them the planets and the stars. So. Okay. Um, what are some of the other work that you do with other disabled kids? Uh, well, at the community center, I work after school teaching science programs to them. And we work with uh, children of different abilities. and. Um, do some simple science experiments. Um, yesterday we worked with magnets, mm -hmm. just how you re repel the north and uh, the north and north pole or north and south pole attract each other. How to make uh, the magnetic field penetrate the different materials to move things. Simple things like that. We'll do a rocket launch with a little uh, film canister with Alka Seltzer rockets. That's a lot of fun for for them too, and they uh, get excited about science. That's. That's what I work with. I work with uh, children of all ranges in that center, and that's uh, been a great opportunity. Okay. Um, now, you're, uh, you grew up in a different type of generation, okay, um, 70s and 80s, correct? Right. Um, years ago, they used to have all these food commercials and, you know, um, yeah, right? right? Now, do you, how do you plan to branch out? This is my first question. Second question is, um, a lot of these, a lot of um, cookies and, and snacks have preservatives. Right. Right. Actually, I think we should start with that one. A lot of these um, foods have preservatives these days. What makes your cookies um, different? Do you, do you use more all natural ingredients? I uh, use common ingredients that you find in the store. I'm trying to get to all organic ingredients because there's a big market for that. Mm -hmm. And that's where I would want to branch out into the organic foods market, like Whole Foods, for example. Um, the other market is to try and branch out to the uh, adolescent market we, and try and get more wholesome food to them because of the nature of childhood obesity and, and awful snack food that's full of fat and cholesterol. Say that again, sir? Uh, try and reach out to the adolescent community mm -hmm. that eat, eat snack food that's full of fat and cholesterol mm -hmm. and sodium, sugar. I'm trying to reduce those things to make my cookies healthier. So mm -hmm. that's the next way I'd like to branch out. It's organic and healthy. Uh, what made you want to really work with disabled children? I think I, uh, it was really the, my experience at the graduate level at Bank Street College when I was taking that special needs class, when mm -hmm. I had a chance to work with special needs children, uh, eight and nine years old, and um, to see them really light up and have a passion I've never seen before to create uh, art projects, mostly uh, imaging themselves through creations of paper and cardboard sculptures, and to see how they, how they express themselves was something I've never seen before. So it made me interested in how they, how they felt about themselves and their work. And that, that gave me the interest to work with them. So. Um, do you um, teach kids with special needs baking skills? And if so, how? Uh, currently, I, I don't have a regular opportunity to do that. Um, but um, I do like to show children how I make these um, by kind of condensing those steps, as I mentioned, and kind of showing them uh, basically how I showed it with the ingredients, and then here's the dough, and then I let them scoop some of the dough out, and then make some cookies uh, by all put in the oven for them. And they can watch it with the oven light on. You can actually watch the, dough, watch the cookie dough change, spread out, and rise. And that's always a lot of fun mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. So right now it's at that level. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a formalized class yet, so um, that's something to work on. That's another area to expand into. Now, what, uh, what is what really is? I know you said your mother, right? Okay. But what really inspired you to uh, educate people or learn how to educate people? My mom was a teacher, mm -hmm. and I think it's in my blood. 
I know it is. I have an, a, a really a gift to teach, um, and I, I take after my mom quite mm -hmm. a bit, I think, in that area. Um, so with her natural gift, I think I expanded on that when I discovered things when I was unemployed working in museums. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, Steve, I would like to uh, thank you for joining us on this edition of Special People, Special Issues. Thank you, Larry. It's been a pleasure. When we come back, we'll have the Special People, Special Issues bulletin board after these messages. Now, Krista, make sure you stay with her the whole time. She's new to the country. This is her first Mom, day. This Mom, is a brand Mom, new country. Mom, it's a whole different it's culture. Be okay. Now, make sure you stay with her the whole time. I'll be here right okay. after school to pick you up. Okay, Mom. Okay, have fun. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV, love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. What did you dream about? Something I did. Are you on your way to the I'm beach? Lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. There is also a very attractive extended warranty option that includes free service and parts for the next five years. But there's no need for you to get that. You failed to get the test you needed at the doctor that would have detected disease early enough where it could have been treated. So you won't be around in two years to see him grow up, which means the warranty would be useless. Okay, sign here, please. For a list of tests every man should have, go to ahrq.gov. Now, let's take a look at the Special People Special Issues Bulletin Board. It contains numbers and information featured on today's program. For more information on Steve's Great Cookies, you can contact Steve Ruff at 914-709-9871. That number once again is 1-914-709-9871. Or you can reach Steve Ruff at Stephen, uh, Stephen Ruff at, oh, I'm sorry, Steve, Steve, well, I'll do it again, I'll do it again. Three, two, one. For more information on Steve's Great Cookies, you can contact Steve Ruff at 914-709-9871. That number once again is 914-709-9871. Or you can reach him at Steve Ruff at OptumLine.net. That's Steve Ruff at OptumLine.net. Well, that puts an end to this munching edition of Special People, Special Issues. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time.